Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown. I'm gonna go through a lot of these uh, topics really fast, or as fast as I can. I'm gonna stream them all together. Number one, I'm gonna go through some of the comments, give a couple shout outs, and do some replies. Okay, so let's jump into it. Here's a comment from Bitcoin Fiend on top. I have millions of OMI and lots of VV NFTs with full sets, but as a collector, I like the versatility of going back and forth from VV and Quid. Like the first batch of brands going live for blockchain minting on Quid's platform is at the end of quarter two. So I'm not a rocket scientist, but if they already have things selling for thousands of dollars, the art 2D and 3D, once it hits harmony, it's a wrap. This is money, not religion, you weirdos. That's a perfect perspective. I love the part of Bitcoin Fiend on top. Definitely is connecting the dots with Harmony One. You could look at the Harmony One ecosystem and see how many, how much work they're doing. The Harmony One token to be able to be spent on Quid platform, um, and then Bitcoin Fiend on top. I hope you see this, but you know, they clearly are are getting ready to start accepting Ethereum. But let's keep going. Octane One. I prefer the Omi team. They're very humble persons with passion. But I feel like. Every all of us that are involved in these different projects, NBA Top Shot, Crypto Kitties, Crypto Punks, uh, VV Collectibles, V Friends with Gary V, um, buying and selling things on OpenSea, Beeple Pieces, Prank C with his blind boxes, and regardless of what it is you're investing in, I think crypto, the crypto people as a whole, are humble people with passion. So you know, I agree. Okay, they say any publicity is good publicity. I know what you're trying to say in that Ecomi is far greater than Quid or other projects, but I'm reading comments below and people are actually starting to get interested in Quid somehow. Over time, people will get curious about Quid and as they slowly improve their tech, they'll gain more traction from curious fans. Is it not better to just ignore Quid and other projects and perhaps they'll just vanish since nobody will talk about them just like ignoring them? This is the point that Bitcoin Fiend on top was making. Um, when he's saying this is money not religion you know follow the money and own both before you're uh left with the empty bag section i'm not trying to pump ecomi i'm not trying to pump quid i'm not trying to pump nba top shot but if you look at my very first video it's the very first piece of content on nba top shot as a music video so i've invested in nba top shot and i still invest in nba top shot so um in that sense yes it's uh, it's quid i'm on quid i'm on top shot i'm on open c my NFT wallet is full of all kinds of first moving NFTs in the in the beginning of this boom. Now, if you want to only hold one type of NFT, one style, that's awesome as well. Um, but I don't think you should allow the rise of other NFT projects to, or the chatter about other NFT projects, or the investments in other NFT projects from other investors. I don't think you guys should take that person or allow it to fluster you. Um, I think you should look at it like, hey, if they leave and go elsewhere, it's more for you, you know? Is that we're in the beginning of the NFT boom and Ecomi and Vivi is first in a lot of areas and they're coming with premium design as well as being first, which kind of solidifies their uh, spot in a sense. So the first aspect being first, but as far as being far greater than other projects, there are tons of great projects coming out because all of the projects coming out now are the actual uh, architects of this space, the ones that have been in this space since 2018 and, and before. Like, that's why it's all about the devs right now. It's all about developers because these are the early people. These are the people that are actually shaping the ecosystem and building on top of these different blockchains to create this experience that we all wish and anticipate to happen. So um, I agree with you, DC, in, in a lot of senses, but I want to be clear that I'm not specifically saying Quid and I'm not specifically saying Ecomi. Even Romania and 4K, you know, straight up uh board ape yacht club you know what i mean so i mean just because they're investing in board ape yacht club doesn't mean that they can't invest in vv or quid but let's answer this question why don't they do with vv well, what vv is doing why aren't they doing augmented reality and it's a completely different uh it's two completely different things two completely different spaces i believe it's this whole platform that quid had had nothing to do with money Everyone says that Quid only focuses on the money. They only focus on their transactions. And the reason why is because until they, the cash, cash sales is something that they just introduced into the platform. So prior to the cash sales, it was only, people were only buying and collecting things as a game. There was no money involved uh, as far as selling these items. People were paying to get tokens to buy 
packs of cards and open blind boxes of digital collectible toys and figures, and and that was it. So then they introduced here recently the cast feature, which allowed a lot of these quid users that paid in-game coin tokens for these collectibles to now, with the introduction of the NFT world and the blockchain stuff, now they're able to actually cash out and, and sell these things for cash. So when you see someone selling something for $2,000, if you look at the history on it, they paid maybe a 1,000 in-game tokens two years ago. So that's one aspect where they're able to get cash and their people, all these people with old accounts are coming back and they're seeing their account is full of money um, because they never knew anything about the cash, the cash implementation. So saying that to say, outside of the cash, they are now introducing Ethereum and allowing Ethereum holders to actually make purchases on Quid with their Ethereum. When I spoke to you guys in a different video and I said, hey, go onto this app, buy this thing for a dollar, wait for it to go to blockchain and make some money or collect, get, get some number ones like, like the Gale, right? The Gale is really into the Kripkins and the Gale is really focused on low mints right now, right? And you want to focus on uh, first appearances, right? So what about the first appearance 3D collectible identical Kripkins, identical to VV? predate VV, predating crypto kitties are sitting on you have number ones for 10 bucks sitting on the quid platform and quid is currently moving these things to the blockchain to open c to harmony one allowing people to purchase them with ethereum so what will happen is we will have these VV collectibles that will be awesome in their own right but then out of nowhere, there will start being identical Kryptkins, specifically what we're talking about, and I'm speaking to the Gale on this one. You'll have a number one, say you have a number one Kryptkin that was released June 4th, 2021, and it's on the blockchain and it's an NFT, right? Officially licensed from Cryptozoic. You have a number one. Then, out of nowhere, you see on Ethereum, or you see on one of these, uh, on OpenSea, or you see on Harmony One, that there's another... Cryptkin that predates your Cryptkin by four years and it's an NFT as well but it's a number one lower mint as well as a lower uh, lower count right and by date it's the first appearance of digital collectible I don't think people are wrapping their minds around that what makes the crypto punks so you know in their own category is because they're OG. What makes Crypto Kitties what they are is because they're the OGs right now. They're the first. So, you guys need to think about that. Please download the Quid app. There and only there you will notice they only have permission to mint God's Unchained trading cards. Their entire Quid library is trapped behind the app. It is not mintable. It's important that we put real info out on this company. Just having 325 licenses isn't that impressive. Remember, anyone with enough money can pay for licenses. VV is literally pioneering things. Notice VV has DC NFTs, and Quid is trapped with DC digital stickers. What I do agree with on here is that coming from a space like VV, um, there's not all of these different categories of what you can collect. For example, on VV, there is no option to collect a sticker. But on Quid, you, so on VV, you only see 3D digital collectibles. But on Quid, there's three categories. On Quid, there's stickers, there's cards, like Magic the Gathering, and then there's figures, which is 3D digital collectibles, the identical collectibles from VV in the sense of the Kryptkins. So in that sense, um, I do agree with you where a lot of things are not mintable. Um, they are the ones that are mintable aren't what aren't related to the brands and IP that people from VV would necessarily care about. Um, and then 325 plus licenses isn't that impressive. I mean, that is pretty impressive, um, especially if you're going to start being able to introduce these 325 brands to the blockchain, just as well as VV's licenses are impressive as well as their NFTs. Okay, owning just VV NFTs is like saying I'm not going to buy ADA because I own Ethereum. If you're super early in both projects before mass adoption, why not own both? 
Quid has 7 million users, that's not something to just overlook. The goal is 100 million, so the more excitement and eyes we can get for the digital collectible space, the better. That's how all boats will rise, just like BTC lifts up Ethereum or ADA. That's Bitcoin fiend on top again, coming with the real. I agree with that. <coughs> I agree with that. And when I seen this, when we seen a spike in Bitcoin, there was also a spike in, in a lot of the crypto markets, uh, in the sense of like in the NFT spaces. Uh, there was a super boom, was it back in like February in the Bitcoin space, and then it hit as well. It showed in a lot of the NBA Top Shop market. And things were selling out of this world, right? I don't want to hear about Quid. I don't want to hear this about Quid. Don't talk about Quid anymore. Maybe they'll just disappear. Like, no, they won't disappear. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even have a thousand followers, number one. But they won't disappear. Um, just like if I don't talk about VV, VV's not going to disappear. And you could click on or off. But it's all love. There's no, no ill intention. Uh, what happened to Go Chain? Okay. So let's get into that one. I don't know this guy, but he was the crypto guy behind the Go Chain collaboration. Kiwi Tech Entrepreneur Assets Frozen in Bitcoin Fraud Case. The Court of Appeal has frozen the assets of two Kiwi Tech entrepreneurs who are facing court action in Singapore. The case is novel because the New Zealand court has allowed the claimant, MB Technology, to pay security for costs in cryptocurrency. Blockchain company MB Technology is suing David Yu and Daniel Crothers and their company Ecomi in the High Court of Singapore. Ecomi is a technology firm which is selling a secure wallet app for digital assets like Bitcoin and VV, an unlaunched app for digital collectibles. So this is probably what was going on um, behind the scenes um, as far as, I mean, this, as it says, an unlaunched app. So... This is in 2020, so this is before they released. But this is when, when the case started, I guess, when they actually froze uh, David Yu's assets. That kind of can throw a little wrench in your whole concept of Ben Gadazi, the one that circled in the video prior. He's the one that kind of was helping them out with their like introduction into the blockchain with the whole cryptocurrency thing, um, as well as so as well as like their I don't know how deep he was with their tokenomics, but it descri it's described in the next article because David Yu came out after this and he, of course, claimed that everything was false and it was literally uh, allegations, you know, it wasn't true, it was alleged. And David Yu said, like, he was surprised how the court was able to get his, how he was, at, how uh, Ben Gadazi was able to get the court to freeze his assets without any kind of real proof um, or physical proof that this stuff was going on and it was pretty much just a accusation uh, that's the word I was looking for so anyhow um, let's go to this one it kind of looks exactly the same but it's like here's September 2020 and then here's February 2021 uh, Kiwi entrepreneur settles 3.2 million dollars US in a case against their Bitcoin advisor after months of litigation Kiwi entrepreneur David Yu has had his assets unfrozen by the courts and a case against his company Ecomi settled the legal action came about after Ecomi, a digital collectibles firm, went into business with a cryptocurrency influencer, Ben Gadazi. And they went into business with his firm, MB Technology. Now, what is MB Technology? MB Technology is registered in the British Virgin Islands and described on its website as a company of industry leading blockchain project advisors and initial coin offering strategist. So, if you go look at the previous offering, I mean, the previous offering, if you go look at the previous video um, where they have that whole interview with the Comey team and Ben Gadazi, the question comes about, and they actually state that they didn't really need the initial coin offering in the money for investing. I mean, because the initial coin offering is usually like to help you is to get some like investments in your company. So they were basically saying like they didn't really need the the coin, but that was something that was advised to them, the whole setup of how they approach the blockchain, which blockchain to go to, um, and the advising on how that they would like, strategize their initial coin offering, um, which is how everyone came about buying their OMI today. So anyhow, this settled 
what, four months ago? <laughs> and what, everybody else, how long have you guys been on the app? You know what I mean? So anyways, um, this is probably why there was they have been hesitant to see which blockchain they want to go on, how they should go about it, because their advisors, their initial advisors that they started with, um, it ended up, it ended up falling apart. So, uh, Ben Gadazi, I, I don't know anything about this this guy except for the videos that I've seen him in interviews with uh, Ecomi. But he reminds me of, of okay, so as you know, I live in Los Angeles, right? And I have a friend uh, from out in Hollywood that he, he's an actor, and he plays a part of this guy in the movie Limitless, uh, which is a movie related to the stock market. Um, so he plays this guy, and Ben Gadazi reminds me of the character that my friend plays. Um, and it's no shade. I know Ben Gadazi's probably a good businessman. I mean, he clearly won the case uh, for $3.2 million, so, I mean... He, I mean, he won the case. I mean, they settled. But, I mean, a lot of people settle just so, you know, they don't have to deal with deal with all the mess. And uh, for a super whale like David Yu, I'm sure $3.2 million, like, he's, he probably will spend that on a Pokemon collectible card or something. You know what I mean? So, anyhow, but look, this is, this is you know, this is who I think Ben Gadazi reminds me of. Check it out. In a down market, no one was making much. The base case that would reflect the but no one had NZT. Armed with Vern's last $800, I made $2,000 in a day. Next day, $7,500. It was too slow. I'd need more capital. But banks weren't lending to guys like me. Hey, let's him in a quarter back out. told you that I'm looking for a short-term loan. Yeah, and I told Liv, forget it. What, uh, why? Because I don't see you before, and I don't fucking like you already. <laughs> why do I give you $100,000? Because I quintupled my money four days in a row. So you got a fix in the game? No, not a fix. I was able to calculate certain patterns using algorithms. If you look at column four, this was the first. <laughs> You're good. Okay, it's a fix. Yeah, you know, all you people get caught. What are you gonna do then? Well, it's not as if I have a black book with your name in it. That's what you're talking about. And besides, I get the strong feeling that you're not somebody I want to disappoint. Don't get up. Hey. Sit, don't get up, sit down. Okay. Okay. You take this, you mine. Okay. You understand? You don't pay, you know what we do? I cut you at waist. Peel your skin up over your head and tie a knot in it. You don't die from this. You suffocate. Okay. Good luck. Uh, next, we're going to go into another concept that we could possibly see come to the VV-verse or the augmented reality when we think about uh, comic books, DC comic books, immersive, um, immersive portals. Um, I'm going to introduce the idea of portal comics. We'll tap into another NFT company that's coming out called Chronicle. Um, they're mainly focusing on like cards and things like that, but the team behind it uh, all come from the Jurassic World. Coin Market Cap, you could look up Chronicle on there to get some details if you want to check that out. And then you could also go to chronicle.io if you want to read their white paper, check out their telegram. From the looks of it, it seems like they're just doing collectible cards. Let's read this description. First things first, what is Chronicle? Chronicle is a studio and marketplace, digital platform built entirely for fans, featuring officially licensed digital collectibles, also more commonly known as NFTs. Launching in 2021, 
users across the globe will be able to buy, sell, trade, bid, and gift authenticated digital collectibles licensed directly from the world's leading brands coming soon to the metaverse. So what I know so far is that they're starting with two brands uh, or they have two licenses or something like that. And I believe they want to launch the app as well as the website by the end of July. Uh, they'll be rolling out something in June. Um, so here in a couple weeks, but then they're going to fully roll out, I guess, mid-July. XNL is the is what powers Chronicle. It's carefully crafted utility token designed to offer a series of rewards and incentives for the Chronicle community. Premium access to limited edition collectibles, discounts on trading fees, rewards and bonuses, staking incentives, incentives, um, governance and voting. So here's like their little breakdown of how they see it coming. Um, one thing I did notice is that Chronicle collectibles. I mean, everything recently that I've been reading is saying that Chronicle Collectibles went out of business and that their the owner just vanished or something like that. Don't take my word for it. You should do your own research. But anyhow, I don't know if these are connected, but just look at these dots that I'm connecting. Okay, so Chronicle Collectibles. I'll show you an article in a second and you guys can tell me what you think, right? I go to ChronicleCollectibles.com. They're down, right? Website is down. So then go to News. And it's like, uh, Chronicle Collectibles seem seemingly closes its doors. Chronicle Collectibles disappears, leaving questions, unfulfilled orders. Um, yeah, so, I mean, see, that's Toy Book. That's in January. I don't know the connection to this, but um, Chronicle was producing a variety of licensed collectibles inspired by Star Trek, Outlander, Stargate, Fallout, The Terminator, and more was touting the launch of a Jurassic World Kickstarter project as recently as last July. Following numerous reports on social media regarding vastly delayed products and unfulfilled pre-orders, the company and its owner, Clay Brown, began a social media retreat in October, locking down profiles as rumors of its impending demise began swirling despite no formal bankruptcy filing or a closure notice. Well, I don't wanna get into all that, but basically I'm just saying like, Chronicles is connected to all of those brands that they just named, Stargate, Fallout, Terminator, uh, and Star Trek, Outlander, and then they're saying that they were uh, also working on the launch of Jurassic World, right? So a Kickstarter. You go here to this, back to, back to this. This is Chronicle, the next evolution of trading collectibles. You know what I mean? So right here, it looks like cars. But when you go down to look at the team, meet the Chronicle team, co-founder, Tim Glover. Wow, hold on. So, yeah, meet the Chronicle team. Co-founders, Tim Glover, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, Jim Jin, Thor Chain. I think they're coming out of uh, Australia, I believe, Thor Chain. I could be wrong. Um, but that's a good project, uh, Thor Chain. And I believe they're at, like, I think they're already at, like, 12 bucks or something like that. But uh, Doug Neal, Universal, NBC Universal, Lucas Lang, um... Lucas has been an investor in blockchain since 2018. Doug Neal, 10 years experience in digital marketing for Universal Pictures. Um, Jim Jin. Jim has been involved with tokenomics behind successful projects su such as Thorchain. Um, and then Tim Glover. Tim has worked as a viral marketing and franchise consultant for Universal and Amblin's Jurassic World franchise, creating immersive digital content. Tim works tirelessly for the fans and is driving the creative arrangement for Chronicle. Okay, um, and then Yemu, Yemu, co-founder of Bella Protocol and ARPA, ARPA. Yemu is serial entrepreneur, crypto art collector, and avid DeFi investor. But this is basically what I want to show you. It's like Chronic Studios, <coughs> Chronicle Studios, Jack Edwin's manual. Manuel Vegerino, 3D environmental artist, including AR, VR technologies. Manuel has consulted with Universal Pictures and created immersive digital media for the fans of Jurassic World franchise. So it just seems like they're going into, like right here it says, you know, it looks like they're doing cards. And then in the interview uh, that you'll see, they're talking about uh, cards and digital collectibles. But when you look at the team, Jurassic World, um, yeah. So you guys can look into that yourself, but I just wanted to update you. They should be dropping soon. And again, the token is XNL. Then I'll just drop a quick snippet on the MLB platform licensed NFTs that called Candy that Gary Vee is investing in. This is separate from his V Friends NFT release. Right-handed Domingo Herman in the middle of his warm-up tosses. This will be his 10th start. Four and three record. The
Then I'm going to let a video play of a alleged Omi millionaire sharing uh, his thoughts on whether it's more valuable to invest in Omi or invest in BBB NFTs. Satellite Omi homies, it's Symbol and I'm here with my first video. I just want to let y'all know I've been in the game since February 25th and I am a Omi millionaire, oh millionaire. It's the first time I said that out loud, so cut me some slack. I seen all the videos all y'all been putting out since day one because I was approaching the Comey VV app without having heard anything about it. I was just randomly searching NFT in the app store and that's what came up. And so I wasn't sure if it was a legit project and I really didn't believe in it until I got my hardware wallet. And I'm not sure if I still believe in it, but I, I'm checking out these videos and everyone's still saying that you should be bag holders when the price has fallen some 50% and you know the I'll, I'll tell you all right should you sell your Omi short answer is yes a long answer is yes you should sell if you believe in the project you should sell your fucking Omi right now homie because look it the NFTs are gonna appreciate in value so much more I am kicking myself. I got here on February 25th. I spent 10 grand. I bought up all the fucking Omis. And then it did a 3X, you know, you know, from a third of a penny to a penny, it did a 3X. That's diddly squat. There was all the NFTs still sitting in the shop, you know, just collecting dust. The Ritmos, man, I slept on the Ritmos. I don't want none of these things that's got dreads. I can't, I'm a white guy, you know, so and I slept on it and there was hundreds of them there and instead I bought Dolce because I had seen Dolce on Poshmark next to a bunch of Louis Vuittons and so I knew I could sell VV NFTs but here's the thing other YouTubers any other crypto people they will not tell you that that VV has competition and you know you think you're getting the first of the first of the first of the Rizzo's you know, with the Batman NFTs, but really, Quid has been in the game for three three years ahead of them. Like they they're probably ripping off Quid, just making it 3D. And uh, Quid, if it didn't go down the drain, like I'm kind of new to the Quid thing, so I don't know. But it looks to me like the economy's already blown out. You know, I I grew up on Gaia Online. That was the first social media forum, really. And I watched Gaia Online implode due to inflation, and that's exactly what happened to Quid, because they couldn't get their economy tokenomics under wraps. But I mean, as far as having the first NFT, uh, you know, you got you probably got to have Quid was probably the first licensed Batman. I'm sorry to say, but you should sell your Omi and buy them Rizzos right now because they're gonna appreciate more than Omi. Omi has some scarcity, but you know, 750 billion with the divisibility thing, don't make it that scarce. There's only a couple hundred bubbles out there, you know, that anyone's gonna touch because them people, oh yeah, all the YouTubers don't wanna tell you that, you know, there isn't 250,000 users. There's emulators. There's maybe 100,000 users and you know, a hundred thousand emulators because all the crypto flippers and people that have been in the game for a while are working, you know, five, five BB apps at once, crashing the store, trying to buy everything up. And then, and then, you know, when they make their YouTubes, they say that, oh yeah, I got one ultra rare. Well, hey, guess what? Don't buy Bitcoin to send yourself Bitcoin on Bit4x because that's so expensive. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. You need to buy Stellar Lumens because it's got the cheapest fees. It's the fastest, by far, best technology out of all the cryptos. And, 
you know, Bitcoin is old, slow grandpa coin. Uh, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. 50% of my whole portfolio is Bitcoin and I tried to keep it under 30% and just keep selling when it became too much in my portfolio. But Bitcoin, old grandpa, old grandpa coins taking off. But hey, check it out. Omi might 5X. It might 5X, you know, but Bubbles is definitely gonna 5X. If you believe in Ecomi long term and you only got a couple bucks, VV and Ecomi, they are not gonna be buying your Omi from you in the next couple years until they've spent everything they got. So you should be looking at something that's gonna turn over better like them stay puffed mans because we stay puffed out here and I'm just headed home. I'm a normal nine to five guy. I'm, you know, doing quite well for myself because we're in a bull run right now. And if you're really going long on Ecomi, you know, the Omi is not gonna survive the bull run, but them, them uh, Todd McFarlane's will. You know what I'm saying? 88, 1988, uh, Todd McFarlane's is the way to go. That might not be it. I might chop this up, add a little bit when I get home, but it's probably it. Later, y'all.